Java Records is a new feature in Java 14 which makes it easier to define classes which only purposes to carry data, for instance records returned from a database or remote service. I have created an example of using such a simple data class here. Uh, as you can see, first I defined a variable named brand and license plate, and then I create a vehicle pocho here on line 9, and uh, I pass the brand and the license plate as parameters to the constructor of the vehicle pocho class. And then I can print out the uh, value of return from get brand and get license plate, which will be the values um, that I pass to the constructor of the vehicle pocho. I can also call toString on the vehicle like this. Uh, maybe I can make it a little bit more, more obvious that I'm calling toString here. So before we had Java records, um, the code needed in order to generate or to create such a class, a vehicle pocho here, is what I have shown you here. You have to define a class, I have to put in a, a brand, a member variable, a license plate member variable. I have defined a constructor that takes brand and license plate as parameters. I've defined a get brand method. I've defined a get license plate method. And I have defined a hash code, an equals method, and a toString method. And as you can see, um, it's a lot of boilerplate code for something uh, as simple as a class, which only purpose is to carry a brand and license plate together as a record representing a vehicle. Now let's see how much code is needed to define a similar class using the new Java records feature. There you go. One line, that's all. Notice here that instead of using the class keyword, I use the record keyword now. And I've defined a class called vehicle1. And um, already up here in the in the record definition, in the before we have even uh, jumped into the body, I define a constructor. This is the default constructor for this um, record. And it takes a string named brand and a string named license plate as parameters. And when the compiler sees this, uh, the compiler knows that you have to define a brand and a license plate uh, member variable internally in the um, in the record. And not that you have to do it, the compiler will do it for you, right? The compiler will also generate um, like two getter methods for brand and license plate. It will generate the hash code and equals methods as well. So let's go back and see how it looks if we use this class instead of the vehicle pojo. We simply replace the name here, and there you go. Now, the thing is, um, the methods, the getter methods uh, generated inside of the record class do not have a get in, in front of them. So we get the brand and the license plate simply by calling brand and license plate, not get brand and get license plate. But in all other respects, the code is the same. Let's just try to run this code uh, to verify that what I'm telling you is true. But first, let me first um, create another vehicle. Um, call it vehicle 2. And um, it's a vehicle 1 instance as well. We will just give it brand and license plate as well as parameters. Now we can also print out whether vehicle uh, equals vehicle 2. Right? If these, if this uh, vehicle class was a standard um, pocho class, then um, the standard equals method would compare the two uh, object references to each other. But uh, since uh, that Java compiler generates an equals method for us, it will actually look at the internal um, variables, the member fields here of the vehicle instance. So let's run this and see what happens here. Um, yeah, it's a little bit slow. Okay, now let's have a look at that. We get these values printed from brand and license plate. We get two string. You can see this is a generated two string. 
So um, we get that out, and then we get true because the two uh, vehicle um, objects records are actually equal to each other because we are passing the same brand and license plates to their constructors. It is possible to add uh, other constructors to a record, and let me just show you how that looks right here. This is a vehicle two um, record. You can see I still define the default. Um, constructor up here outside of the body of the vehicle 2 definition and then inside the body of the vehicle 2 definition I can put an extra uh, constructor if I want to however this constructor has to call the default um, constructor so as you can see I've defined a constructor that only takes the brand um, parameter and then it simply calls this which is the default constructor up here with brand and then null for license plate if you want to see how it looks to call that um, it would look like this it's not really a big mystery vehicle 2 1 new vehicle 2 and then we would just pass brand and everything else is pretty much the same as as in vehicle 1 which only has the default constructor It is also possible to add extra instance methods to a record. And I have an example here. Uh, as you can see, this is a record that has both an extra constructor. But it also has an extra instance method here called brand as lowercase. And if we go back here to the example here, let's change this to 3. We call it 3, 1 instead. And now you can see from vehicle 3, 1, I can now call brand as lowercase, right? There's a new method here. And by the way, um, don't get distracted by me using an underscore in a variable name. You should normally not do that. I'm just doing that because I'm calling it 3.1, but we cannot use dot in a, in a variable name. So don't get confused by that. Don't do it yourself. Uh, it's just for illustration purposes. Now, the uh, brand as lowercase method just returns whatever is returned from brand and then converts that to lowercase using a to lowercase uh, call because brand returns a string so that's possible um, and it's also possible to add static methods to a record and I have another record uh, definition here showing how that looks if you look at this um, method down here you can see that I have uh, added the keyword static and this is a static method that returns the brand as uppercase not as lowercase as this method up here does and the way you use it is simply to say um, first we need to define a vehicle for because it's inside the, it takes you know the static method takes a vehicle for as parameter right so we say vehicle for equals new vehicle for brand brand license plate and then I can do vehicle for dot brand as uppercase vehicle for right now and then uh, I just define this variable here brand as uppercase right now I can just print it out we can run the example you can see that it is actually working um, but there's nothing special about this static method here. It's just a static method like in any other class, but um, it can be useful sometimes in a record class. Now you can see that we get the brand out here in uppercase, and that is the first thing we print from this example here, right? The rest is just the values that were printed from other parts of the example. And that is pretty much all you need to know about Java records in Java 14 in order to start using records in your own applications. If you like this video, why not hit the like button or maybe share it with a friend or colleague or maybe, maybe even subscribe to my channel and you will get notified when I post new videos. Remember to check out the description below the video where I have a link to a textual version of this tutorial as well.